What if I would tell you that the internet, as we know it, will be replaced by a new immersive 3D internet? What if I would tell you that people would literally live inside of this new digital universe? They would go to work, they get up, they do all of that stuff, they meet friends, they learn, um, dating, all of that stuff that you can imagine, everything. And what if I would tell you that people would actually spend their real money inside of this universe for real estate, for clothes, for um, art, all of that stuff that we already buy in our normal world basically, but that would all move also to the digital space. Well, we are slowly moving into a new living, shared, everlasting virtual universe realized through AR and VR, which is called the Metaverse. And with everything, whether you like it or not, the Metaverse is coming and it's going to stay. And in this video, I want to cover what even is it, Metaverse explained, without all the marketing business bullshit that you always hear. So let's get started. But first of all, welcome to my channel. My name is Dinesh. And in this channel, we talk about AR, VR, how to get into the industry, how to grow it, and how you can become a creator. And now also everything related to the Metaverse. So if you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments below. Subscribe, all of that stuff you know it already. And now let's move on. In this video, I want to cover three big questions when it comes to the Metaverse. So first of all, what is the Metaverse? So that will be the longest part on the video. Then when will it happen actually? And then who will be affected by it? And the last one will be like a discussion. Uh, what do you think about dystopian or utopian? So are you really excited for it or are you more like afraid on it? And yeah, let's get now into it. So the $1 million question, what is the Metaverse? Disclaimer, everybody has a different definition. So Metaverse is made out of two words. We have Meta, which stands for beyond or successor, and we have Verse, which stands for universe. So combine them and we have future of the universe, AKA the next iteration of the internet. The term Metaverse was coined by Neil Stevenson in 1992 in his science fiction novel Snow Crash. But what does it really look and feel like in a practical sense and not so academic? So over the time, the mediums that we have used become more immersive over time. We started with like reading books and texts and all of that stuff. We started even before that um, stories. So really um, imagining things. Then we started with like photos, watching photos. And now today we are really primarily using video for most um, consumption of content really. And yeah, Metaverse, or let's actually go one step before that, uh, VR and AR, which is the, the immersion of um, the experience that you're having, basically, is the next iteration of that. So instead of being limited in this 2D rectangular screen, um, we can actually be inside of the experience. We can be at any place in the world. We can actually be inside of the human body to study it. All of these things are possible with immersive technologies, AR and VR. So what are the core components of the metaverse from a user-based perspective? So I don't want to go like super deep into the tech details. Unless you want that, then let me know and I will do a video on that. And yeah, for that, I found a really, really good article on the internet by Eric Redmond. And I will link it in the description below because this section is really inspired by his model, which I really like. It's the a to E um, yeah, core of the metaverse. So we will talk about A for avatar, B for brands, C for creators, D for democratization, and E for experiences. And these are really, yeah, I would say the most important things that you need to know um, covered in a 15 to 20 minute YouTube video. Let's start with the first one, avatars. So avatars are going to be our digital representation inside of the metaverse. What does it mean? Basically, you know, all of our like little icons that we have on uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, all of that stuff. Um, kind of like this, but much, much, much more because we can actually have a 3D physical body inside of the metaverse because um, we are not bound by 2D screens. So you can really be anything and anyone. You are not bound by your skin color, by your height, by your weight or anything like this. You can really kind of like virtually construct your representation on how you want others to see you. I'm performing surgery but not on a horse, on a human. That's great, Beth. You always wanted to be a real surgeon. 
So you really can express yourself however you want. One great example of using avatars is Ready Player Me, which is a company that provides avatars. So if you want to create your metaverse avatar, you can go there and check it out. And then the coolest part is you can actually take it to different metaverses, which I will talk about later on, because there's no like one ultimate metaverse, in my opinion at least. And you can take these avatars and bring them with you actually. And with all these skins and clothes and um, hair styles, all of that stuff basically will come along as well. Next one, we have brands. And brands will play an important role in shaping the metaverse. Because think of it, like we will spend a lot of time inside of this virtual world. And what better way would there be to kind of like get you to buy that stuff, of course, um, by actually being in that space as well. Because companies in general want to be where the attention is. And if either it can be on um, Facebook initially, then it went to Instagram and could be all over the place. But now in the future, the next iteration of the internet will be there as well. So companies who started to um, market themselves online, for example, had a huge advantage over the ones who still stay local, for example. And um, it's gonna be the same for the metaverse. So companies like, for example, Gucci or Nike or Rolex, they will really like be in there already, try to be fast and um, kind of take on this opportunity. And of course, my brand, Immersive Insiders, will be there as well. And let's see, maybe we'll have some cool clothes also to check out or anything else. But um, I think brands will really, really take a big part um, in this because it's a complete new economy. You can make a ton of money on that. Like there are estimations that say that the metaverse will be like a multi-trillion dollar industry basically. Um, just like the jump from uh, offline to the internet basically. It's kind of the same. So if you're a company and you want to get into the metaverse, let me know, I can help you out. And yeah, so let's see what's next. Number three or C. My favorite part, maybe. Creators. Creators are essential and they are extremely important in shaping the metaverse just as they are important in shaping the normal internet or the current internet. Like people like me, for example, who is doing this video right now or all the other artists and music people and um, of course YouTubers, other content creators. All of these people will be super important. One way how creators can monetize their creations, for example, will be through selling NFTs. So you can um, design the shirt and then you can sell it digitally as a NFT and then people can buy it and then can be happy, all of that stuff. Again, let me know if you wanna know more about NFTs in the XR world because it's a super fascinating topic. And yeah, in general, user-generated content will give the metaverse its unique and creative look. And I think like creators are, ah, I'm so, so excited to see what people are going to build there. Super cool. One great example for creators shaping the metaverse is Travis Scott with his virtual concert he gave in Fortnite and that attracted like 27 million people on a concert. That is just crazy. And um, we will see more of these things and it's just um, such a huge opportunity for all of us. And probably the most important thing on this video, I would say, number D or four, democratization. And that just means that no one should own the metaverse. There should be no centralized um, company, corporation, entity, government, nothing like this um, that owns everything that is happening in there because yeah, that would lead to a lot of problems. Just imagine it, our data is co being collected already like a lot, but we are not like um, primarily living in this virtual world right now. Like we are a lot on um, social media most of the time, I would say YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, all of that stuff basically. And they get a lot of information already. But I mean, on the metaverse level, it really gets into the, the how do you think, like it literally will be also how your brain works. I have a BCI over here. Let me just get it to you one second. So this, my friends, is a brain computer interface. This one is specifically called Nextmind. Let me see, there is some focus. And um, it's it's amazing. Like you put this thing, check out the video in this corner here. You can put it onto your back of your mind and then you can control things by using a mind, using a brain waves really. And these things being collected, it's just super scary just thinking about it. And that's why 
data should not be owned by anyone. <coughs> Fortunately, we have enough technology that this is actually possible through the blockchain. And one great example is the central land. I haven't checked it out yet, but I will do so. And um, yeah, so that is really, I would say, just something that is kind of critical and um, important. And the last one, which is uh, so big that I can actually make a complete video on its own on this topic, which is experiences. And yeah, you can do a lot in the metaverse. You can play chess with a virtual person in real time in AR, for example. You can do immersive sports, which is super cool. You can just chill out with your friends on a couch, basically on a virtual couch, of course, and then watch a nice little um, finals of League of Legends or Smash Bros or some other cool e-sport. And um, yeah, there's just like a huge abundance of potential experiences that you can do in the metaverse. Like me, mostly it's gonna be like multiplayer games, of course, multiplayer experiences, all of these kind of things. Like again, going to the cinema, going to um, play chess with each other and having amazing virtual events, which is something that we will get into um, early 2022. Yes, so Immersive Insiders, stay tuned. We will have some really cool uh, virtual events coming up next year and yeah i guess um there's a lot more so let me know if you want to uh, have a video on that so when is it going to happen first of all there are yeah, still obstacles of course to solve but it is not science fiction anymore it's something very real that we technically could do today already so i believe that in the next i would say three to five years there will be more and more adoption for especially vr because there the technology is um, the technical challenges are easier in vr on ar i cannot see the future but i would say about to five to seven years when we see some bigger adoption to um, to this technology just because it's kind of hard to um, build all of these um yeah sensors and displays and all of these things into the small nice looking lightweight glasses that are transparent and all of that stuff and that's why ar will take a little bit more but in general i would say for vr three to five years for good adoption and also for the metaverse kind of stuff and then ar a little more five to seven but again that is only the mainstream vr and ar is heavily used already today in a lot of enterprise applications. And there are so, so many use cases on how to use it in business. I actually have a, literally a TED talk on that that covers like business education, all of these things on immersive technologies. So check it out here. Yeah, we'll be over there. Cool TED talk, kind of biased, but again, I think it's nice. And again, so it's not only um, in the next couple of years, it's already happening and it's yeah very productive. In general, I would say that there are four demands that have to be met on, um, on these technologies to get a lot into mainstream. And these are demand, accessibility, software, and hardware. So demand, of course, like do people who actually want this kind of stuff? People are very excited about it. It's just the second part, the accessibility that is kind of lacking right now, but it's getting a lot better over the last years. And um, yeah, mostly through the price really. Like VR, I don't know, like five years ago, you needed a big beefy machine, like a huge PC with a lot of power. You needed to buy like $1,000 headset at least. Then you had these external cameras, all of that stuff. It was just bulky and not so easy to get. And now, where do you have it? One second. You have devices like these already. This is the uh, this is the Quest 2 and this is the Pico Neo 3. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just this thing. That's all you need, nothing else. You just put it on. Oh, it's actually on. So I can already see something really cool. Amazing graphics, I have to say. Really cool. So the accessibility is already going a lot better. And then software hardware is also something that is, um, I would say, not too bad. But again, over time, we will just see much, much better. And um, yeah, so not too far anymore. So who will be affected by it? I believe that it will have a major impact on general society really, just like the internet did, the smartphones, social media, all of these things that um, kind of replace all the devices like um, fax, I mean, 
that doesn't count for Germany. There will be thousands of new jobs and opportunities, whole businesses tailored to the new experiences in the metaverse. And that is something that um, anyone who's now like excited for that, you can really jump on this opportunity and just see what comes really. I believe that the metaverse will come gradually. It's not gonna be like a switch like this and then suddenly we are all living in VR or something like this. I think it's slowly, slowly happening over time. I mean, I'm doing it a lot already, um, mostly for work, but um, still like it's not gonna be like this. And as soon as the cultural changes adapt to it, technology, technological, technological upgrades and all of these things, um, it will slowly, slowly be the new form of internet. And then just to keep up with productivity and um, your friends hang out in metaverse, it will be slowly, slowly be in this kind of direction, I would say. So dystopia or utopia? You think it's amazing or you think it's super scary? I actually think it's both. It's super amazing, but kind of scary as well. And um, I assume for one half of the audience right now watching this, it's like, yeah, amazing, SWOT Online is coming. <laughs> and for the others, it's like, oh God, Black Mirror and Matrix is coming. So I really would like to see what you guys think. Um, so let me know, are you pro metaverse or are you contra metaverse? Can be a hefty discussion. I personally believe that also in the internet 3.0, we should have some rules kind of like that, um, just keep our mental sanity in place really and most important that no one owns it and starts to play god or something like this that would be like the worst case scenario so we need a decentralized metaverse and again like there are so many other things i want to touch on but i think that will just blow up the video like how do we still keep in touch with our physical world, our physical body. I mean, we are still human beings. That needs like working out, eating, drinking, meeting people, like feeling people in real, going to the nature, all of that stuff is, I think not um, a, a, a goal to aim to, to replace all human um, experiences to a digital place. Even though I'm a big fan of virtual reality because it has a lot of opportunities. But um, I don't think that it should like replace our existence. Like that would be, again, the matrix kind of scenario. So to sum up, the metaverse is coming. It's going to take a couple of years or so. And people who embrace this new technology will um, yeah, have a ton of opportunities. Just imagine becoming an iOS developer in 2007 or something like this, or starting like selling online in early 2000, something like this. So there is a lot of opportunity. And if you like the video, then you really should watch this one over here that here I will also talk about uh, metaverse topics. And thank you for listening. As always, I see you in the next one.